Um, give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Um, thank you so much. Many of the participants of uh, the today's meeting praised uh, International Criminal Court, which uh, is interesting. Um, since at least two of the co-sponsors of today's meeting, the United States and the United Kingdom, did everything imaginable to shield their own military from the ICC's reach. Both countries developed protective legislation. American law is so far that uh, it was nicknamed among Western legal professionals as the Hague Invasion Act. Political pressure, financial leverage, and even imposing personal sanctions on the ICC prosecutor, all these led to the desired outcome. Investigations into war crimes committed by soldiers of these countries in Iraq and Afghanistan were, quote unquote, deprioritized by ICC. This is a rather sophisticated term for a very simple thing, namely not doing anything. This perfectly illustrates both the real degree of ICC's impartiality and objectivity, as well as hypocrisy of US and UK, who all of a sudden started to support uh, the court and pour millions of dollar, dollars there as the nations. Such an attitude turns justice into farce paid for verdicts by paid for court. International perception of ICC's role and stance was well demonstrated by Ukraine. Its declaration on acceptance of its jurisdiction, dated 8 September 2015, represents an ill-famous attempt not only to limit the court's jurisdiction, but also to assign the blame in advance, before a formal investigation even started. Like we said, ICC is a merely political instrument and has nothing in common with justice. In light of today's remarks of uh, the High Commission on Human Rights, we would like to note that it has become a tradition for various fact-finding missions established by OHCHR to conduct their business without physical presence in the respective country. In this regard, their methods of work presuppose reliance on information provided by NGOs as well as available in the open domain, namely the internet. Working in this manner, it's literally impossible to distinguish between the truth and myriads of fakes. We would be hesitant to draw any conclusions based on information of that quality. Today we also heard about the role of NGOs and civil society. This role has indeed been very prominent. The West mobilized a real fake news factory to produce new lies 24-7 to create a parallel reality of what is happening in Ukraine. All of the fakes mentioned today were refuted multiple times. Butcher provocation, by the way, got a new twist. According to The Guardian, most victims were not cold-bloodedly shot, as it had been claimed for at least three weeks already, but rather killed by artillery, anti-personnel shells filled with small dots, called flechettes, from the uh, French word standing for a small arrow. It's the same type of uh, uh, shell that Ukraine has been using to bombard Donbass since 2014. There is a lot of evidence about that in the internet. It seems that Western media will have to forget the word Bucha just as quickly as they forgot and banned the word Kramatorsk. It was another prominent fake. Everyone from day one had been confidently blaming Russia for a missile strike on the railway station, killing 50 and injuring 100 civilians, until the serial number of the missile surfed, surfaced uh, in the social networks, identifying it beyond any doubt as Ukrainian, used by the same military unit that bombarded civilian targets in Donbass. Anyone is raising the issue about Ukraine's accountability for Kramatorsk now? any NGOs or civil society or maybe mainstream media, complete and shameful or rather shameless silence. And so we thought. What we heard today was another portion of unsubstantiated claims and even fakes seasoned with lies, hypocrisy and pompous rhetoric. If you want to learn the truth about real situation on the ground, come to our ARIA Formula meeting on May 6th 
we plan to give the floor to some independent voices working on the front line to demonstrate you facts, not fakes. Lastly, I would like to stress the flow of fake news will not shield Ukrainian neo-Nazis, foreign mercenaries and their sponsors from accountability for heinous crimes. Multiple witness statements and evidence to that effect are being collected right now across Ukraine, including in Mariupol. Witnesses confirm inter alia routine uh, military use by Ukraine military and nationalist battalions of schools and even kindergartens, as well as other civilian objects. Ukrainian military are not ashamed to do that. They post photos of their military positions there online. I used to collect such posts as evidence, but stopped doing that because they were way too numerous and just keep coming. Ukrainian military and nationalist battalions also routinely use civilians as human shields, on the extent compared only to ISIS tactics. But here it's even worse, because Ukrainian military are doing that to their compatriots. And yes, torture centers in 21st century are truly unthinkable. There is uh, a lot of factual evidence as well as witness statements about SBU is the operated secret torture center in Mariupol airport. It was cynically named the library and it was created in 2014 where, when Azov nationalist battalion moved into Mariupol. This specific center was used to torture, rape and kill the books. That's how neo-Nazis called the prisoners there ordinary civilians who were suspected of being non-loyal to Kyiv regime. Rest assured, perpetrators of these and all other heinous crimes will be brought to justice. No one will escape personal responsibility and denazification of Ukraine will be completed. I thank you. After hearing uh, the representative of the Russian Federation, I now...